We're in sixth grade. Uh, today we got our second investigation. Um, it's working with a compass and a straight edge. So if you have those devices, a compass, a straight edge would be a ruler. You can use the side of your book, anything that helps you draw a straight edge. Uh, the protractor would work with it. If you don't have those things, that's fine. We'll just show you how to do it um, as, you, as we work through this. Okay, so you got this big packet, guys, that we're going to work through today. You don't really need your book at all. It's in your book, but this is an easier thing to work through. And then you don't really need your yellow folder. I just want to highlight a few things in your yellow folder. Number one, there's nothing to fill in. Number two, everything that we go through in this packet is now in your yellow folder. But we're going to very shortly get a power-up fact practice that asks you a lot of these terms that are found on here. And you're like, Mr. Bob, that's investigation two. I turned that packet in. How am I going to do it? It's all in your yellow folder. So your yellow folder is going to be a great resource when we get um, to that power up to be able to do those things coming up shortly. Okay, got your name on it. I'm just going to start reading through this, guys, and highlighting a few things. Then we're going to start working these examples for you on the board uh, and explain to you how to do that. A compass is a tool to draw circles and arcs. Here are two kinds of compasses and their parts. So you have uh, the compass, which as you get... In my mind, the higher level in math you get, the more you switch to this type of compass besides the one on the right. But there are three main parts. You need the pencil, which they call the marking point. You need the needle, the point that sticks in, which they call your pivot point. And then you need, they call it the radius gauge. How big is the radius of your circle going to be? And that's the measurements on the inside of that circle or you see it on the other device. Okay, now I'm going to give you all the terms. The pivot point is placed in the center of the circle. The marking point is the pencil point that draws the circle or the arc. The radius gauge is a guide for making the circle a certain size by setting the radius. The distance from the pivot point to the marking point tells you the radius of the circle or the arc. Now in circles, the circumference is the distance around the circle. Remember, we just got that from perimeter on Monday, but perimeter works with polygons, things with straight lines, so that's why we call it circumference. It's the same thing, it's just got a name because it doesn't have straight lines. The center of the circle is the name on the, of the point that is the same distance from any point of the circumference of the circle. The diameter is the distance across the circle that goes through the center. The radius is the distance from the center to the circle. It's half the diameter. An arc is a part of the circumference on the outside. A sector is a section of the circle like a piece of pie. It's bordered by two radii and part of the circumference. Concentric circles looks like a bullseye target. It is when two or more circles have the same center and we start working our ways out. So guys, you got a bunch of vocabulary and then you have it all pictured there for you. Um, from concentric circles to sector is the piece of the pie. Arc is just that little piece of the curve. Radius, half it, diameter, all of it. Turn the page, we're moving on. We still have a few more. A chord is a segment with both endpoints on the circle but does not go through the center of the circle. An inscribed polygon is a polygon that is inside a circle whose vertices of the polygon are on the circumference of the circle. A semicircle is half the circle. A central angle is angles whose vertex is the center of the angle. And then an inscribed angle is an angle inside the circle. That's what inscribed means. The vertex of the angle is on the circumference and it opens to the inside of the circle. The sides could be chords of the circle, okay? So you have pictures of all those things. All right, here we go. Number one, it says, please do these drawings on a separate sheet of paper. Attach the paper to this worksheet. Sixth grade, I already did that for you. So you have on the back a stapled sheet of blank paper. Now, we got a number of activities here, so don't write too big. But I'm going to go through what we have to do. So number one says, draw concentric circles on your paper. So I'm going to open this to number one, and I'm going to show you what it means to draw concentric circles if I have a compass. So if you have a compass, guys, you start with a small circle. Um, now I'm just going to point out a few things when it comes to these, these little fancy, fun compass devices. If you have one like this, guys, you can see it's kind of flimsy, and it wiggles pretty much. So if you ever want to get to higher level math, you start to buy one that's a little bit fancier, you'll see there's this crank in the middle. This is how I adjust the size of it with this crank. But then I can't move it 
it's solid. So these are pretty nice. Now when it comes to drawing your circles, guys, um, what's easiest to do is press on this thing very lightly, put a tilt to it. So if I was gonna write on my piece of paper, I'm not straight up and down, then my lead doesn't slide. So put a little tilt to it. Now you can draw it with your arm and twist your wrist. Sometimes it's easier to just spin the paper on your desk, but you gotta draw concentric circles. If you're using a compass, start with a small one, put the needle on your piece of paper, draw a circle, make it a little bit bigger, draw another circle, make it a little bit bigger, draw a third circle, you have concentric circles. Sometimes when it helps, guys, we like to hold it up here, but if you have these cheap ones, they wiggle like this, so I usually pinch it here, and that's why I turn my page, because I'm too busy pinching this. Then my fingers are holding it so it doesn't wiggle. Sometimes we're up here and we start to draw our circle, so the compass goes woo and gets really big as we're spinning it, because this isn't tight enough anymore. Okay, number one looks like this, guys. I had my point, and it said draw concentric circles. So I had my point in the middle, I drew a little circle, I drew a bigger circle, I drew a bigger circle. If you want, get a fourth one on there. Okay, I just did it without a compass. If you want to do it with a compass, it'll look better. If you don't have a compass, no sweat, guys. You're drawing a concentric circles. So you have a bullseye for number one. All right, you put that on your blank piece of paper here somewhere with a number one. Now I'm going back into my packet to read number two. We are going to inscribe a regular hexagon inside the circle. I'm going to read all these points to you, and then I'm going to show you what that looks like. It says, make a circle with your compass and keep the radius the same for this whole drawing. Put the pivot point of the circumference of the circle. Draw a small arc that intersects the circle. Do not change the radius gauge until you are finished with this activity. Now, put your pivot point where your arc intersects the circle. Draw a new arc. Keep moving to the new arc and drawing another until you made six small arcs. The arcs are equally spaced around the circle. Now use a ruler or any straight edge to connect the points where the arcs intersect the circle. You have a regular hexagon inscribed in your circle. So here's what they're saying. Get your compass, get it set, and use it to draw a circle. So number two would look like this. I got my circle and I drew it. Okay, there's my little needle point there. Now what it says is, start wherever you want. I'm gonna start at 12 o'clock. And I didn't move this compass at all. And I go from 12 o'clock and I put my needle now on this mark. And then I swing my compass and it's gonna leave another mark. And then I'm gonna move my needle to that new mark and swing it again. And move my needle to that new mark and swing it again. And move my needle to that new mark and swing it again. Move my needle to the new mark, swing it again. Move my needle to the new mark, and I'll be right back to where I started. Now, guys, we're doing a hexagon. Hexagon has six sides. So here's how I do this without a compass. I take my clock here, and the clock has 12 hours. I divide by six, and I get two. So I put a mark at 2 o'clock. I mean, I put a mark at 12 o'clock. I put a mark at 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock. 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Now the last thing they do is they say collect, connect your hours. So I connect with a straight line, 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 connect with a straight line. And there you have a hexagon inscribed inside of a circle. Let's review. Draw a circle. Start putting marks around the side. 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and you're back to 12. Connect your dots. You're going to be asked to do this on a test, guys. They'll say inscribe a hexagon. If you have this, it'll work perfectly and be nice and neat. If you don't have it, you do exactly what I did. Circle as best you can. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Connect the dots. Problem solved. Number three. Now we're going to inscribe a regular triangle inside the circle. It says, make a circle on your paper, make the six arcs the same way you just did for number two, connect three dots, or every other. Good review. On your piece of paper, number three, start, draw a circle. Here we go with our marks, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 
back to 12 o'clock. This time we're only doing a triangle, three sides, 12 divided by three is four. So I go from 12 down to four, four plus four is eight, eight plus four is back to 12. That's why they say skip every other one. So anytime they ask you to inscribe a triangle, boom, 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 four, eight, 12, done. Guys, that math works perfect, hexagons and triangles. Notice they're not asking you to inscribe anything else because everything else doesn't work out perfectly like that. Just those two. Okay, so you had three examples on that, on your blank pieces of paper. Now we're to number four. It says, what is the measure of each triangle? So we're doing this problem, guys. Now, remember, I have a triangle here, and what we're really trying to do is we're trying to figure out each measure. Now they said, measure each angle with a protractor. So you could do that. You could figure out the measure of this, set your protractor on, on there, and get a reading. You can also solve this um, using math if you know that triangles add up to 180 degrees. How many sides on a triangle? Three. So I took 180 degrees, I divided it by three, that goes in there six, that's 18, is a zero, three goes into zero, boom. I have my answer for number four. 60, that little shaded box is what gets your degree sign in your box. Number five, it says what is the sum of the three measures of the angles? That's what we started with. 60 times 3 is 80 degrees. So if you were actually measuring this, you're supposed to measure 60 and 60 and 60. And then number 5 says add 60 plus 60 plus 60, get 180 degrees. Number 6, what shape will we make if we now draw segments between the remaining points of the intersection? Let's do it. We're down here. We're supposed to draw points between these remaining ones. So now I'm going to draw and connect that dot. 2 o'clock, down to 6 o'clock, back to 10 o'clock. Sweet. What shape did I drew? I drew a star. Oh, I lied. A 6 is your blank. A 6-point star with a regular hexagon inside it. So your blanks for number 6 is 6 and hexagon. All right, now it says divide a circle into semicircles. Here's how I do it. Use a circle, divide a circle into semicircles. Use a compass to make a circle. Don't change your measurement. Don't change your radius gauge. Put the pivot point on the circumference. Make an arc in the center. Move the pivot point to the other side of the circle. Make another arc. Where the two arcs intersect is the center of your circle. Draw a diameter through the center of the circle. You have divided your circle in half. Here we go. Get to your back side, somewhere where you have blank space. And we're up to number activity six. So I'm going to call that number six here. It says, draw a circle. There was my center point. Then get your needle on the outside and start to draw in the middle. And it's going to draw like that. Then it says, move to the other side. Put your needle on the other outside. Draw like that. And they're going to touch just like that. Then they say, take your ruler, put your ruler anywhere you want, and go from top to bottom right through that center, and you cut it in half. You did a semicircle. Number seven, it says, can you divide a circle into thirds? Use your compass to make a circle. Find the center the same way you just did with the two arcs. Divide the circle as you did the hexagon with six small arcs. With a ruler, draw a line from the center to one of the points where the arc intersects the circle. Now draw a line from the center to every other point, and you will have a circle with a Y in it. Okay? So what they're saying is number seven over here. Step one, draw your circle. Step two, do what you just did for the semicircle. Make your little mark. Go to the other side, make your little mark. Take your ruler, chop it in half. Good. Now it said, now do the keep doing that and do your hexagon trick. What's your hexagon trick? Hang on, get the little rope out of the way here. 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Remember, making our little marks every two hours. Now what they told you is, I'm going to erase that so I can do what they asked me to do in the order. You had your little marks, you found the middle. They say, draw a line from 12 down to there and then out to four and out to eight. So guys, you're drawing the peace sign. You just chop your circle into thirds. 
okay? The bottom three points says this. The three sectors are congruent, which means they're all the same shape and all the same size. Each segment is formed with an angle that has the vertex in the center, so these would be central angles. And you can measure the central angle with a protractor. What is the measure, number eight, of each angle of the circle when it's divided into thirds? Well, your choice is what they ask you to do. Measure this thing with a protractor. I'm going to do math, guys. What is a circle? I forget what lesson we had with circles, but circles are 360 degrees. I just took 360. I divide it into thirds. Three goes into three once. Three goes into six twice. Three goes into zero, zero. It's 120 degrees. Number nine, each sector of the circle occupies what percent of a circle? It's memorized. One third is 33 and one third percent. Turning it over. It says, can you divide a circle into six? Make a circle, find the center, mark the six marks as you did the hexagon, connect opposite points of the intersection of the arcs and go through the center of the circle. Here we go. So I'm supposed to do this problem. It says draw a circle. Mark your center. So I went out here with my needle. I made a little mark with my pencil. Went on the other side with my needle, made a little mark with my pencil. Now it says do the hexagon trick. 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Now they said if you go straight through, guys, go through your opposite. So 10 goes to 4, 2 goes to 8, 12 goes to 6. And you just chopped it into 6. Piece of cake. The questions, number 10, what is the measure of each central angle when it's divided into six? Math problem, full circle is 360 degrees. This time I'm dividing by six. Six goes into 36, six. Six goes into zero, zero. Each one is 60 degrees. What is the sum of the angle measures of the entire circle? Guys, what does the circle add up to? 360 degrees. 10A, 60. 10B, 360. 11. Each sector of the circle occupies what percent of the area of the whole circle? What does percent add up to? Percent means out of a hundred. I'm chopping in 100 and I'm dividing it into 6. 6 goes into 10 once. That's 6. Subtract. 4. Bring down. Bring down. 6 into 40 goes 6 times. That's 36. I have a remainder of 4. So I have 16 and 4 6. 4 6 reduces to 2 thirds. So I have 16 and 2 thirds percent. Your problem for number 11. Okay, here we go. Now it's just going to be fill in the blank. Number 12. It says, before that the directions, use the definitions at the beginning of this investigation, your front page, guys, to help you find these answers. The distance around a circle is called circumference. Number 13, the distance across a circle through its center is called the diameter. Number 14, from the center to the circle is called the radius. Number 15, part of the circle is called an arc. Number 16, a region bounded by an arc of a circle in two radii. That's a sector. Number 17, two or more circles with the same center are called concentric circles. Number 18, a segment that passes through the interior of a circle and has its endpoints on the circle, but it's not a diameter. Now you're on to the, actually the inside page, guys. So your first answers all came from that front page. Now if you turn it over and you're in this second page, you get your answer. That's called a chord for number 18. Number 19, a polygon whose vertices are on the circle and whose points are inside is called an inscribed polygon. Half a circle is called a semicircle. An angle whose vertex is the center of the circle is called a central angle. The distance between the pivot point and the marking point of a compass when drawing a circle is a radius, guys. That's the radius gauge. That's the measure. So it's a radius. The point that is the same distance from any point on the circle. That's your center. Okay? Angle 
that opens to the interior of a circle from the vertex of the circle is called an interior angle. And 25, a profession that might require the use of compasses, circles, and arcs might be number one, a math teacher. Number two, an architect. Number three, if you ever watch uh, war movies in the Navy, boats are always measuring using compasses. So map people love these things. They'll open this up and say, this is the distance of 100 miles, and they'll just click that off on their map. And so uh, captains of a boat like that uh, would use compasses like crazy. Okay, So guys are just saying there are definitely a lot of professions out there that need to know how to use a compass. Key takeaways from today is how to inscribe this hexagon, circle, and then just remember, hexagon is 6 divided by 6, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and back to 12 and just mark your marks with it, okay? I probably went pretty fast on those definitions at the end. If you need those things again, just press the pause button or the rewind button now. Check it to make sure you have those things spelled correctly. Blessings on your day.